The Zika X is launched in Malaysia and is a beauty of a car. Let's check it out. <music> Over the past few weeks, there have been a few Chinese cars that have been launching here in Malaysia, and I've always missed the launch. So this time I found out that there was a display for the Zika X down close to the Pyramid Mall, and we decided to go down and check it out. Now, outside of the building, there is a Zika 009. There's actually two vehicles that were launched, the 009 and the Zika X. So these are both electric vehicles that are due to Malaysia, but they've been in the Chinese market for some time. These cars are pretty well put together, and I have to say I'm really impressed with these cars. So I want to give you guys a quick walk around about this one so you can see what it looks like, and then we'll take a moment and we'll go inside and check out the other car. So check out this one. The Zika brand is one of the brands under Geely, which also houses Polestar, Volvo, Smart, and Lotus, amongst others. Now, what I like about this car is the design. When I first saw this car in a Chinese YouTube video, I was like, wow, this car needs to come to America. But of course, this car is pretty much going to be in the Southeast Asia region and China. It is made to be similar to the EX30. The platform is exactly the same. The powertrain is exactly the same. The car itself, I feel it's actually a bit more upscale than the Volvo EX30. In Malaysia, they don't seem to bring out the version with the 20 inch wheels. This is the top model that's being shown here and it has a 19 inch wheels. Now in Malaysia, this car is gonna start about well, it's under 180K ringgit, which would put it right around $42,000. The color in this particular bottle is really, really nice. It reminds me of a Volvo S60 that I had with this particular color. So let's get started on the interior. This car has three screens inside of it, and there is a head-up display as part of those screens. I was really surprised that it had so much inside of it because the Volvo EX30 only has one screen, which I find kind of annoying. As far as the steering wheel, it's a pretty simple layout. Now in the Chinese version, it's actually power steering and these little controls on the wheel is what you use to tilt it up and down. I'm surprised that we didn't get that in the Malaysian version, but I guess it's some cost cutting. And of course, typically the Chinese bottles get a lot more features than we'd see outside the country. And believe it or not, this is priced somewhere in the 20,000 to 30,000 range in China. Imagine if there was no tariffs, no markups, this would kill the whole car industry. But anyhow, let's get to the interior. There's some storage space inside this vehicle that it's not a lot, because again, it's not a big vehicle. It's really like a, I guess a B-segment car. That little slot you saw inside the center console is a charging slot. So you can put one phone inside there and charge a car. The other cool thing is that this car has a refrigerator. Surprising, yeah. And from what I've seen in one of the videos about the Chinese version, you can disconnect this refrigerator and take it out of the car with you. And actually it's a heated and cooled box, not just a refrigerator. The quality of the screen looks really good. And as far as layout and touch of the materials, I mean, I'm impressed with this car. They do things a little bit different as you notice. The controls for the drive, reverse and neutral, is on the right hand stock and the turn signal and wiper around the left hand stocks. So that's something, you know, we're not used to in the States, but then again, this is also a right hand drive car. So things are a little bit different, but since they don't have a control for the drive mode in the center of the vehicle, they have to put it on the stock.
Now, most of the controls are done right there inside the screen, but some of them you can set soft buttons on the steering wheel to control them. But from my playing around with the screen, things work fairly well here. And of course, there are physical controls on the seats as well for your adjustments and for your lumbar support. I think it also has massage. I can't quite remember. Um, there were so many people here, so I didn't get to play around with a lot of it. But the seats, yes, it's not real leather, but they're all perforated. Yeah, they got this little uh, gold tinted thing in the, on the center of the screen and on the backs of the screen. I mean, so the, the seats. And they just looks really awesome. The car just looks really well put together. I feel this is what the Volvo EX30 should have had, but I'm quite surprised that we didn't get it. But yeah, as far as how the layout and everything on this car, it's it's top notch. You know, space on it is actually pretty decent. And let me show you what what I'm talking about when I say the space in this car is actually decent. And you've been able to find it not in spot. This is yeah. it's a little tight. No, I think for my driving, this should be good. This thing comes out of mm. this doesn't go down low, but I have enough have space up there. Right. Put your hand. That's also another thing. Oh, but the, mm -hmm. this one. The headrest? The headrest is comfortable. Yeah. I think seat is comfortable. Overall, I mean, it's, a, it's on a narrow side. It's fine. To open the door, there's a slot there. You put your finger inside of it, you touch the top of it, and the door pops open. So it means oh, not quite a fist. Okay. Oh, no. More space here. Mm -hmm. I don't think this. Yeah, this doesn't tilt. It's unlocked. It's just one position. And here you may have two hands up there. Yeah. So, yeah, the hand room is, is good. The foot room is a bit. If you're wearing high sneakers, it doesn't go under that. And it goes up higher. But this is the lowest position you see right now. It's, you know, it's a little bit of a money there. But I mean, for a you know, small amount of travel, that should be fine. Now, the space in the rear seat is comfortable, it's decent. As you can see in the previous video, I can sit behind myself fairly well, it's okay. As far as leg room, yeah, it's a bit tight. Um, the seat should have to be raised up a bit for you to be able to put your feet underneath it. But all in all, it looks really good. I really love these gold tone looks on the um, window switches, the button to open the door. And, you know, it's, it's really nice. It just gives it a whole luxury look. And they got Yamaha for the audio system inside the car. Now, I don't remember if this uh, double pane glass or not. I don't think it is. For an additional point of reference, my wife was sitting in the back of the car. So she was checking on the car and I asked her to move over to the other side just so we could see what she looks like behind the driver's seat. Now I'm five foot eight to five foot nine when I'm wearing these high sneakers. She's five foot four. And as you can see, right there behind the seat, she has more than sufficient room. So if you're on the smaller side, this car will be perfect for you. And if you're a bit taller, you know, for short journeys, it'll be fine. So now let's check out the trunk because this is the area that I would have liked more space, but for what it has, I, I think it's pretty decent. So let's have a look. So as we see inside, the trunk is finished very nicely. It's a premium slash luxury car type of finish in the back of the car. When you see back there, that is like the parcel shelf that's pushed up against the back of the seats. The space, you know, I wish it would have been wider, but of course they're the wheels, so you gotta, you gotta have those. Now underneath, it's about three inches or so of space on the top there. And of course there's a little hole further down at the back of the car 
where you saw your cable. Personally, I put the cable up underneath that area there, so it will stay up there and leave that extra space for some kind of bag or something else. Overall, it's really nice. If you need to use the parcel cover, you can just pull it out and put it in place and you can put things on it for short travel distances. But then again, if you are traveling and you want to get the maximum amount of trunk space, you can fold this thing back and stick it up against the back of the seat and it stays right there. Now, as far as additional space, we're going to go inside the car and fold down the rear seat so you can see what it looks like. What I also like is that the car has uh, electronic lock from the back, but it doesn't have a, sorry, electronic close, but it doesn't have a lock. So here's the rear seat folded down so you can see what this, this space is like. There's a little tab up there that you have to pull up and then once you pull it up, you release it and then you can drop the back of the seat. It's decent amount of size. I'll put it on the side so you can see what the actual numbers are. It's a 60-40 split. So there is sufficient room. If you're an empty nester, you know, or just a couple like ourselves who don't have kids and you want to use a car to travel and get a lot of stuff inside of it, it's pretty roomy once you drop the back seat. So there's no complaints there. The charge port is the standard CCS1 or if it's CCS2 type, similar to like what we have in America. Now, as far as um, charging is concerned, both vehicles are going to come with a 66 kilowatt hour battery. It's an NMC battery. On the AC charging for the lower level version, or they call it premium, it's going to be 7.2 kilowatts. And on the rear, sorry, the all wheel drive version, it's going to be 11 kilowatts. Both of them also charge at 150 kilowatts. So that's pretty good. As far as range is concerned, when you get the rear wheel drive version, it's listed at 440 kilometers and the all-wheel drive version is 420 kilometers. So there's a bit of a difference right there. When it comes to performance, the premium version, that's the rear wheel drive, will come at 200 kilowatts and 343 newton meters of torque. The flagship all-wheel drive will be 315 kilowatts and 543 newton meters of torque. Zero to 100 kilometers is 5.6 for the premium and 3.8 for the all-wheel drive version. I really like the Zico X. I was really looking forward to this car coming here and now that I've seen it, it's one of my top favorite cars to get. Now, that being said, the BYD Seal is a bigger car with more space and more range. I like that as one as well, but being a little bit older, having some knee issues, I prefer something more than SUV guys. This one is one of the ones that I'm considering. I've also seen the x G6 and the Elite Motor C10 you know, as far as which one is the better one, I have to drive them. Can't drive them just yet. We're in the name of 2H to come through so that we can get a license switched over and start doing these things. But I'm looking. Anyway, folks, let me know if there's any questions you have about the vehicle. And I'd like to ask you, if you haven't done so yet, give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thanks. Take care. And I'll see you in the next video.